Okay. In today's episode of Clunkin' Ain't Easy, which should be a show. That could be a name of a show. Just people building bikes from old parts. <laughs> the way they did it in the old days. I'm still doing things the way I did them when I was 12. I had a set of wheels built up by a, kind of a legendary wheel builder in town. Uh, I had a nice collection of wide flange uh, Schwinn approved front hubs. This one's made in Japan. I have some that are made in France. Uh, I've got a bunch of uh, red band coaster brakes and I uh, had them built on these uh, 7X hoops, these Araya 1.75 uh, box hoops from the old days. I had a better set. He talked me into these. He said he had these. They were nicer, but uh, there's a little more brake rub on these and there's some a little bit of scar in here and there. It's not the end of the world. This is my own personal bike that I will beat on. It's not a show bike. The thing about a red band coaster brake is that, uh, hoping you can see me here, <laughs> is that they take a proprietary cog, right? Which is real thick steel, fits in here and uh, slides right on. You know, no, no issues, nice and easy peasy. You'll see that. Modern uh, cogs won't fit. This is the sort of thing you'll see on uh, the Shimano D-types, CBE 110s, the Sun Tour coaster brakes, the motocross uh, coaster brake by Shimano. Even the Chinese ones all still, they all use this uh, same exact cog. And that will not fit on here. All right, so it's uh, the diameter uh, of this is a little larger and uh, so it's a thing. Now, another thing about these is that the, when you look at a Bendix, you'll see it's a much thicker steel compared to, I hope you're seeing it. I'm trying to adjust the angles so maybe you can see the difference in the thickness. These are pressed, which gives you a 3D thing going on here, which I'm sure that eats up some of the slop with the snap ring, probably adds a little bit of strength there too. The cog I bought is a 16 tooth, which I prefer to run. Uh, I usually will run a 175 millimeter crank on a coaster brake bike and uh, with that extra length on the crank arms, turning a smaller cog on the rear is easier and it's a much faster bike that way. I like to run a 16 on the rear and a 46 in the front. And just for historical purposes, so you know, on the step through girl bikes, the Schwinn's, they had a 46 on the front, 19 on the rear typically. And on the men's frames, they had a 46 on the front and an 18 tooth on their rear, which is a little harder to turn, a little bit faster, that sort of thing. Just men are a little stronger than women. That's typically, that's how it works, physically speaking. Been watching a whole bunch of videos on that lately. <laughs> it's been kind of fun. So, the issue I'm having is, is that this 16 tooth cog, which is the same thickness as the Bendix, the steel, and it is old, it was only 10 bucks, um, it's not fitting on the coaster brake. So, what I'm going to attempt to do here in real, well, I'm going to stop the camera and pause as I go. I first attempted with a file to knock these little nubs down in here, try to open that up a hair, and it's not really working for me. So my next step is a Dremel. I have a cordless Bosch, works with the batteries that I use. I'm going to try the sanding drum first, but I do have a series of small mills that uh, I will progress through if I need to. Jill see these it's focusing there for you and uh, we'll see what happens so stay tuned I'll be back in a minute for you to be a second it is chilly in the shop today I think this is doing much. And 
In my mind, it was the nubs more than anything that were a little bit long. I'm going to go to the mill. going to take some more work. I'm going to go ahead and pause the camera again and I won't come back unless it's fixed or at least work in my way. Okay so I just want to say that uh, this is a stupid idea that you should not do <laughs> but I'm getting closer. I've been at it for about five or six minutes. I got it on that first section there. I got to get it past the second section which you would think are the same size, but it's not super pretty. I think it's going to work. And the reason why I'm okay with doing this, by the way, it's not super precision we're talking about here. Anyhow, it's an eighth inch chain. Things are always out of whack. You're using all these old parts. But do not do what I do. I'm not recommending that you do this. I'm just showing that it can be done, right? So give me another second. It'll be done. Okay. So... It probably took me 10 minutes to do this, and I can get it to seat, but I'll tell you, this it does not look good. It doesn't look good. <laughs> you can see it's a little hokey. When I say I do it like a 12-year-old, it actually looks like a 8-year-old did it, and actually an 8-year-old could probably do a better job than me. But I did have to take out more in here than I thought I was going to, but I think it's going to be okay. I can get it to seat down all the way. Depends on how you put it on there, which is interesting. And uh, it does seat on there all the way. I should be able to get the snap ring in place. And once the snap ring is in, we should be golden. I like to put the split on the snap ring between two of the notches. And then lay this in the center notch and flip this over is me. It's flat. Now, yeah, I don't notice anything wrong with that. I'm going to ride this and see what happens. Okay, so again, I just want to turn that off for a second because the helicopter was flying over. It took me a solid 10 minutes to use this uh, Dremel here. Sorry to keep turning my back on you, but it turns out that at all the little mills that I had, this pointy one here was the best one. It was still pretty sharp. It did remove quite a bit of material. I was trying to be even with it. <clears throat> I don't recommend this. But I was having a hard time finding a 16-tooth cog. I mean, I could find an 18-tooth, no problem. 
Uh, this one also doesn't say Bendix on it. That's the reason why I went through the trouble to see if this will work. I will take this on the ride. Uh, I'll put it on the bike later at home. Put some tires on it, cruise the bike around, and we'll see how it goes. This is for my pre-war Schwinn. I think it's like a 38, 39. It's a green one. Uh, you see me riding around. I want that to bike, bike to be mostly all Schwinn. So don't do this. I'm not telling you to do this. I'm not saying that what I'm doing is the right way to do it. It's actually pretty much the wrong way to do it. But sometimes you just want to make something work and you don't care. It's your own stuff. I wouldn't, you know, charge for doing something like this. I wouldn't do it either uh, for someone else. You can do it yourself. But just to show you, you can make something work. Making it work. Clunking ain't easy. When you hear people say that, clunking ain't easy, that's why. In the old, I still do everything the way people did it back when. You couldn't just go and order anything you wanted off the internet. Internet didn't exist. So you were finding old bikes, taking parts off them, and making them work one way or another to achieve what you wanted to achieve. You know, the mountain bike pioneers, that's what they were doing. They were using a lot of road bike gearing at the time. So anyhow, at least you know it could be done. You can't say it can't be done because I just did it. Have a good day. Be good to each other. Bye.